Scott, how did that uh, competition on the offensive line look this week to you in practice, and did you find a combination that you liked going into the game? Um, I think we'll have a lot of options come Saturday. I like the competition. Uh, I really like the pad level the guys played with. They, they really p- paid attention to that, and, and seeing them come off the ball with low pads seemed to make a pretty big difference. So we'll have a lot of options and uh, expect a lot of guys to play well. I think Bando made the road trip. Is he, has he kind of got his body back all the way now after recovering? Yeah, he's getting close. He, he was knocked down pretty good. He had two or three different illnesses kind of all stacked on one on top of another, and um, it's a shame because he was – he was probably going to play the week he got sick, and um, I think he's back close to, to being where he was before he got sick. You obviously played uh, Ramirez a lot the last couple of weeks, but then brought in Sabian late in the game. Just how have you seen him kind of stick with it, and how do you feel about just the running back picture as a whole? Right now? Well, it, it's kind of a musical chairs changing landscape every week, and it's based on who plays the best, also based on who's available. Um, so it, you know, hopefully we can get some continuity and consistency there. But um, we've got a lot of guys that are capable, and uh, when they get their chances, I want to see them step up. Just generally speaking, with offensive linemen, is it more difficult to switch sides than it is, you know, between guard and tackle on one side, or what is that challenge like to sort of adjust that? Yeah, I've never played the position. Um, certainly, it's different than playing one side receiver and going to the other. There's more right-handed things and left-handed things that happen, but uh, we got some guys that are capable of playing on both sides and several guys that rep on both sides. Um, so we got to get our best five out there. How do you see your punters come back this week? And how difficult is that at a position, you know, you, you've kind of been through a quarterback where you're, you're still under the microscope in an individualized spot to, to get over the mental hurdle, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, both guys punted great in practice again. They punted great in practice last week. We need it when the when the game's happening, and they're going to be under more of a microscope now because of what's happened. Um, you get put in those situations. Some guys rise to the occasion, and others don't do well and falter. So I just want to see somebody punting the ball that uh, when the chips are down, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, we do stuff with wet balls. Um, you know, forecast. Hopefully, the rain will be all done by game time. Um, you know, most of it is quarterback making sure your quarterback's capable of handling a wet ball and throwing a wet ball. Um, both our guys have have big hands and haven't really noticed any any problem with a um, little bit of moisture on the ball. So uh, we'll get them ready, but I don't think it'll be an issue for Ad- Adrian or Logan. Northwestern's had one of the best defenses in the league since I've been in the league and probably before that. Um, they're really sound. They play hard. They're smart. They don't fall for a lot of things. They keep everything in front of them. Um, you know, we had the ball in their red zone seven times last year and didn't come away with many points, so uh, we really got to do a good job if we can able to get the ball in the red zone of finishing drives. Um, you know, With the way our defense is playing, uh, we got to take advantage of the opportunities we get on offense. Scott, how do you see your team respond attitude-wise this week? No, I don't think it's a hangover. In fact, I had a couple of leaders tell me that as confident as they were going into the season, they're more confident right now about who they are as a team than when the season started. Um, we'd like to be in a little different situation with a record, uh, and I think we've played well enough to have it be that way. But uh, the guys are excited. They believe in their team and, and what we're doing, and it'll all come together for them. Similar track, I guess, but defensively, you had a bunch of guys to speak, talk about what more they could have done after playing like that. Yeah, uh, we're always looking to get better day by day. Uh, as well as they played, you know, there were still a couple things in the first half that I think they could have cleaned up. Um, you know, there's going to be a new challenge every week. Uh, last year we played well against Northwestern on defense, gave up one long run. Uh, so limiting those those mistakes and plays and being sound and solid all the time. Uh, we don't specifically talk about that. I want the guys as ready as they can play for every game. Um, 
the crowd that we get here gives us a big boost. So without having to say anything, I think it it helps us to, to be in front of the Husker faithful. Any specific uh, homecoming memories as a player or has been that coaching? Now, to be honest, when we're getting ready for games, I don't even know if I knew it was homecoming. Uh, but it's a big deal for a lot of people on campus, a lot of people that used to go here. Um, homecoming's a special time, so uh, players are kind of dialed in, but uh, I'm excited for the, the fan base and the student population. Yeah, there's, you know, he, he's tough as nails, so uh, I got so much respect for him and what he's been through and what he goes through. You know, I've heard some of the rumors, and if anybody knows about rumors around here, it's probably me, ridiculous rumors. Um, you know, he probably has lupus and leprosy and smallpox and uh, all these other things. He, he's fine. He's going to play. Um, he's a heck of a player and, and really tough guy. Thanks. Thank you.